Mark chapter 6, verse 30. This is after the death of John the Baptist. And the apostles gathered themselves together. This would be John's apostles and Jesus unto Jesus. And they told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place. And rest for a while. Okay, here comes rest. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as eat. So everything, it's just so many people, so much going on. They don't even have time to eat. And Jesus, Jesus learns from the disciples. All right, John has been killed. Let's go off to a, a, an area. Let's rest. Let's take a break. This is what the disciples hear. And they departed and went to a desert place by ship privately. So they get off into a ship and they go. And the people saw them departing. And many knew him and ran afoot thither out of all cities and out with them and came together unto. So here comes Jesus. And they all recognize him and they're all coming. <laughs> And Jesus, when he came out of the boat, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them. So they leave a group of people for rest. They come to another area by ship. All these people, they're not going to get their rest. And Jesus looks upon them and he has compassion. I mean, they're sickly. They're poor. Their lives are miserable. They got all these commandments and, and, and things put on them by man. God never gave the Ten Commandments to, to burden you down. God gave the Ten Commandments to show who you are. Because they were a sheep. Israel. No Gentiles. And there are Gentiles, they're, they're the fewest. Not having a shepherd, and you see that in the writings of, of the Bible that we've already studied. They're not taking care of the sheep. Just look at them. They're miserable. And they're coming out to meet Jesus, the, 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 the rabbi, the master, the healer. What's a shame is they're not coming to God. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, it's long into the day, not just noon, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. Uh, Jesus, we came over here for rest. We come over here and we've had anything but rest. Send them away. Get rid of them. Great attitude. And we saw that in Matthew. That they may go into the country roundabout, all the areas around about, into the villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. Right, get them out of here. Let them go buy their sandwiches. Let them go you know, get some food so we can be left alone. Get them out of here. And, you know, so they can go get something to eat. <laughs> and he answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. They're hungry? They're good. Give them something to eat. That's not what they wanted to hear. So here they go again. And they said unto him, Shall we go buy 200 penny worth of bread? Now, we already learned from Matthew that they earned a penny a day. 200 pennies worth would be 200 days' wages. Well, that's a lot of money and that's a lot of time. And give them to eat. Shall we give them? Um, almost a year's salary 
to go buy bread for all these multitudes. You know, I guarantee they don't have 200 pennies worth of bread. I mean money. And if they did, we're going to spend it on bread for them? He said unto him, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they said, Five and two fishes. Now he said, Go and see. No, when we close the market, he's going to say, Go preach the gospel. And the church goes and, and go preach the church, go preach the pastor, go preach the fellowship, go preach the, the, the movies. They go and see what they have. They didn't bring Jesus anything but what Jesus asked for. They, they didn't go get a baker. They didn't go get fishermen. They went and go, that's what he said, go exactly what Jesus said to go and do. The church, Christian today and the church today does anything but what Jesus says to go and do. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass, which shows the desert is not necessarily a sandy waste area. Now he's giving them work to do. Not like they've been working already. He says, all right, tell, them to, tell everyone to sit down in companies on the green grass. And it's almost like what God did under Moses and Aaron. Divide the children up into 12. The 12 sons of, uh, of Israel, Jacob. And when you do that, they all have their particular space around the tabernacle. So what he's doing, a prophet like an under Moses, divide them up amongst companies. Everyone has their particular company. Now, I don't know if the companies were by tribes, by family, by where they come from. But there's that division. God is a divider when the world is to get together. And they sat down in ranks. And that word rank is used when Pharaoh tells the dream about the corn. Ranks by hundreds and fifties. It's an order. Again, I don't know how they were divided, but they were divided. Here's a hundred over here and here's fifties over here. And hundred there and a fifty over here and a hundred there, a hundred there, a fifty there. How? And I don't know. And when he had taken the five loaves and two fishes. Now, we didn't get into the little boy. Because we're looking at Jesus, the servant of God, and what Jesus does. We didn't get into Andrew saying, well, there's a little boy here. We didn't get into Philip saying, well, you know, 200 pennies worth. We didn't get into because we're not looking and talking about them in Mark. We're talking about what Jesus does. He looked up to heaven and blessed and break the. Uh, should I ask God a blessing on my food? Jesus did. Should I pray? Jesus did. Should I sleep? Jesus did. Shall I weep? Jesus did. And give to his disciples before them. And the two fish divided they among them all. So what you get is you get somebody who comes up with a, with a soup kitchen. This feeding of the 5,000 is unplanned. You know what we'll do is we'll give them a message then we'll give them food. That's not what it is. Jesus was teaching them. Jesus was fellowshipping with them. The disciples came up and let's get rid of them. May 
I got a good idea. They can go eat Jesus. Let them go get, let them go in the areas in the markets and get bread so they can eat because they're hungry. Okay. Feed them. What? We ain't got the resources, Jesus. <laughs> now we got them. <laughs> well, what do you have? <laughs> we have five fish. I mean, we have five loaves of bread and two fish. <laughs> That's it. We're done. And they're going to be gone. We're going to get our rest. All right. Make them all sit down in companies. What is he going to do? I mean, think about these disciples from Matthew. Their attitude is get rid of them. Mark, hey, we got an idea. They need food. Okay, got it. Well, there's not enough money to buy their food. Why are we dividing these among hundreds and fifty? Why are we, we asked them to get rid of them. Now there, there's a hundred here, there's a hundred there, there's a hundred there, there's 50 there, there's a hundred there, 50 there, 50 there, 50 there, 100 there, 100. What is, what is he doing? And someone is holding the five loaves and two fish like, even they don't know. Maybe me thinking, you know, the five loaves and two fish are for us. We're going to have two of the fish sandwiches. All right, so he's going to send them off. I don't know why they're sitting down. He's going to send them off. He's going to feed us. Hooray. So he asked God the blessing on the food. God asking God for the blessing. And he gave them to his disciples to set them before them. <laughs> You know, they've had great unbelief. Can you imagine what their, their unbelief is now? They're looking. Now, listen, I don't know if they know there's 5,000, but they're looking at hundreds and fifties, holding five loaves and two fish that he's breaking. Say, here, Peter, here, Andrew, here, John, here, James, here, Judas, here, Simon. Here, Matthew. And the tax collector's like, get his little calculator, this ain't going to work. And the two fish, they got four fishermen. Uh, two fish ain't going to cut it. <laughs> it said it before them. And the two fishes divide he among them all. So the bread is put out first, then the fish. I don't know how it was done. I don't know what the division is. I don't know if the five loaves, if there were five different groups of people. I mean, there were 5,000. You had them hundreds and fifties. I don't know how many hundreds. I don't know how many fifties. But especially two fish. Fishes. How do you take two fish and divide them? And they did all eat. 5,000 and the disciples and Jesus. And were filled. They could not eat another bite that day. It was the, the, the sushi buffet of fish and bread. And every time one group of people finish their bread, you know, at the restaurant, they come around, they bring another some bread. And they ate all the bread. And they filled it again, put bread again on that, that area. And this area, they finish all their fish and they put more. The disciples are serving the people. That's not what they want. That's truly what your pastors don't want down here in Florida. Up, up in New England, they do serve the people. 
I've known pastors who will take care and do housework and, and dirty, filthy work for their congregation. I know pastors down here in Florida, and, you know, as soon as they opportunity, they're, they're in another state with another church. They're off at a ball game. The pastors that I had in Connecticut didn't have that time. Now, I'm not saying they were, you know, they didn't go play golf and stuff like that, but they didn't have time to minger around the whole world. They had a congregation to take care of. I know a pastor that went traveling around, and one at a time, half his church was dead, dying. And half his you know, church is having problems and troubles and all that. And he's he's up in Ledger, Connecticut. And the message came out. You know, if you see this pastor over there, he's on the phone out, outside. Let him be. He's having troubles with his church, home church. And it didn't dawn on me. Well, you should be at your home church. Oh, but but you can show your face and do weddings and do the do the, the funeral service so you can see your nice little pretty face. The disciples are serving. Now in Acts, there's gonna be a problem. Then they come up with a group of people called they're not called uh oh, try to think of the name. Well, in the Bible, they're called deacons. I had a church, they call them something else. I forget what it was. But they're deacons. And they are there to take care of, to serve the tables. There are deacons in churches. They don't do nothing for the people. They just got the title of deacon, and they wear these little badges that say, deacon such and such. Well, deacon is to take the finances of the church and help the members. As they need, especially the widows, as Acts puts them to be. Acts gives us, and it, the law gives us, when, when Moses chose the men to be judges, gave us strict rules that these men are to be. To be. Man, I see some of these deacons in these churches, they don't fit. I've been in church. There are more deacons than there are church members. That's not how it works. They are the, and, and how Acts puts it, they are the table servers. And when you got a problem, you didn't go to the pastor. You followed the ranks. You went to the deacon saying, listen, I got this trouble. They would go to the pastor. And they will meet with the pastor and the other deacons they would put forth of the needs of the church, and they would decide if those needs are to be met. And the church I was thinking about, they called them trustees. That's the word I was thinking of. It's not a deacon, that's a banking term. They didn't have a building. So the disciples are walking around. And I was in one, one restaurant, maybe a couple, and they put breadsticks on the table. And then when you finished them, they came around, would you like more breadsticks? And there was another restaurant one time, they put a loaf of bread. And you cut the loaf of bread and you got the butter. And when you finish that, they come by the table. Excuse me, would you like, like more bread? Yeah, or we'd like to have some more butter. Thank you. Or I dropped the knife on the, on the floor. Can I get a new one? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come back up here to chapter 6 again. <laughs> Look what he says. He says in verse 31, he said, come yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. They're not resting. You know what they did? They ruined their rest by opening their big mouth 
because their heart is, all right, get rid of them. Jesus has compassion on them. They have a need. He's preparing them for the book of Acts. Hey, buddies, you think this is hard work. You think this is monopolous. You wait till you go out in the book of Acts and what you got to do. And I can imagine this time that they came to serve in the tables that we ought to find men worthy. And I can imagine when they, they go back and, hey, the 5,000. Our job is the word of God. Why is it the word of God? Because we already serve the tables. We need to find someone to serve the tables now when we go about serving the God. Now, don't get yourself a, a deacon in your church so you as a pastor can do nothing but entertain yourself. Don't come up as a pastor and pull that sermon out of the files, which I've had two pastors do. Oh, I took this out. I haven't preached this. You know, when a preacher says, I haven't preached this one in a while, you need to get out of that church. Because that man ain't studying. When he's, I haven't preached this one in a while. Well, what were you doing? Well, we were at the ball game. <laughs> oh, really? And what's your prayer life like for the sheep? Were you up all night praying like Jesus? You're a shepherd of sheep, right? Well, the great shepherd is not Jesus the example. And if you're going to have the Lord's Supper, when you have the Lord's Supper in your church, the ones passing the plate to, for the people to get the bread and get the, the, the grape juice ought to be your deacons. And a deacon is not to be chosen because you like him. But do they have the qualifications? And if they don't have the qualifications, God has not called a man to be a deacon in your church. And a pastor is to follow that these men are going to go out as evangelists in the book of Acts is what is your critique? What is your what is your resume? Two times with Jesus, we fed the people. We served the people for 5,000 and for 4,000. We seen the work of Jesus. And we went out and we preached on the streets. And people rejected us. We went with one coat. We went with no purse. Nothing extra. And we went out there and lived by God. We didn't have two cars. We didn't have a fancy house. We lived by grace. And we lived by faith with God. And we served the tables. We didn't go to no seminary. We didn't go to no college. We didn't sit under Dr. Such and Such and PhD this and scholarly that. We sat under God and we served God. It amazes me that these churches have to get this pastoral a committee to bring a pastor in a church. You didn't bring anybody up from your own church that can take the pulpit in your own church? Every church here, I've been in, in Florida, every church here practically has a school of the Bible now. I think there's three or four King, five, six King James Bibles in this area, and ain't none of them doing, doing good. I said, ain't none of them doing good. They got the paganism in them, so they haven't learned church history. One of them's got a soup kitchen, and they're rebaptizing. 
One of them's got a music program where you walk out of that church with a huge headache with, with the pastor's son who's in charge of the music group with just filthy, carnal, contemporary music. You got one where, you know, verily, verily, Jesus, truly, truly, and you're not going to get a mansion. You got one where, you know, the, the people in the, in the Old Testament were Christians. And I rebuked these, these pastors personally. And I'm not going to tell you the answers they get. And I had one pastor, you know, well, I heard that you don't like birthdays. You know, like, you know we do them here. Okay. You must have a, a, a guilty feeling for you to say that to me. I didn't say nothing. But, okay. I'm only going to say something someone asked me. I wrote my son saying, you know, they were, and I, I didn't say nothing. Now, if somebody comes up and asks me something, I am not going to lie to him. I am not going to withhold like you are doing. And then another church kicked me out of their church because I got preachy. I got, and they got all upset because. I said that their church was too decorated for VBS. Well, you don't like it, don't come back. Okay. And then a, a week, two weeks later, and this long email with all this stuff that you sat there and thought, well, I, I hate him for that. I hate him for a bumper sticker he has. You know, how dare him put a bumper sticker? M my rescue dog is more smarter than, than your sixth grader or whatever. Well, look around. <laughs> My dog is well. My dog, I know. My dog could speak. Your children can. My dog will obey. Your children, you know. I'm going to do it. Stop. One, two, three. In the church house. Four, five, six. I tell my dog sit, and he obeys. Stay, he obeys. Behave, he obeys. Your children didn't. It? These disciples. One's going to commit suicide. Go into the book of Acts, serving God, and they are, um, I'm trying to think of the word the Bible uses, they are promoted by God to be evangelists. And then they choose men to serve the tables. You don't ordain a man into the ministry just because he came out of college. That's a greenhouse plan. You know, if you had had not difficulties in life, if you have not sat by a hospital bed of a loved one, if you have not had the troubles and problems and bills and all that, and you come out of Bible college all fancy free and, and squeaky clean and all that, you can't counsel the people. Oh, that's right. You don't counsel the people. You got Christian counselors now. Yeah, the church has come a wrong way down the toilet. And they did all eat and were filled. That's interesting because Paul will speak about to the Corinthian church as far as the Lord's Supper. Have some food at home. Don't come to church and take the Lord's Supper as your supper. But this is not the Lord's Supper. But in the church, you've taken the Lord's Supper as a, as a fellowship. It's not a fellowship. And even this really wasn't, it was unplanned. Can you imagine these disciples at the end of the day, what just happened? And all people are doing, you know, the Chinese, the Japanese. I was like, good meal. You know, you know, you come out like you do with the buffet. Oh man, I wish I lived closer to the house. I'm just gonna pass out all my stomach. Oh, I should have had one more bite of that fish, but it was good. Too much bread.
Too much carbs. Not if it was unleavened bread. We had a friend who used to give us, he would go to the Jewish bakery and give us Jewish bread. And I'll tell you, that thing was heavy. If that's the kind of bread they had, whoa. And they took up 12 baskets full of fragments. So not only were the people fed by the five loaves and two fish, there were leftovers. And a fish. And they that eat of the loaves were about 5,000, okay, men. This is not counting the, the women, and this is not counting the children. I mean, if you were to take half the men to be married with one wife, you know how the Israelites were, but you would have 7,500. And then you take the thing there, if everyone had three children, four, five, six children, seven children, 12 children, there was more than 5,000 in the attendance of five loaves and two fish, at what moment did, did, did Peter, this is not working now. Matthew, come here. You're the tax collector. Have you ever had anything on this, your books like this? This is a miracle. And the people didn't tithe, and they didn't give, all this came from a little boy. And have you ever done your checkbook? Have you ever worked out your balance with prayer? And, and you get the end of your checkbook. Like, Whoa. Everything just got paid. And I still got money left over. Well, how do you do? And as many times I get done. Like, how do you do that? And then you go out. And you bring home a full load of groceries. And the house is full of groceries. And you see at the end of the day. What happened? God happened. And you pray to the fact is, in your era, you're kind of praying, well, I hope I didn't do the checkbook wrong. <laughs> it's a miracle. And are you going to stand there and proclaim Jesus as the sorcerer, as a magician, outside the fact is that he is God, and God alone. That with Elijah, he, he was living with, with a widowed woman and her son, and a little cruise of oil and a, some thing of a meal. That every single day that woman went in there, got the cruise, and got the oil, and made cakes for everybody. And there was more, there was same amount the next day to make more cake. You got to think it's somebody get up in the middle of the night and look in there and say, who's putting the scoop in there? And yet the world turns around and says it's Santa Claus. You wake up in the morning, and there's all the gifts. It ain't Santa Claus. It's Jesus Christ, God. And this came from by 12 men, and I don't know how many disciples of John, with a bad attitude. Get rid of them. You said rest. We've had anything but rest. And then Jesus gives them more work. And the people are sent away filled, full. And I don't know, those 12, now they didn't take those baskets with them when they got in the ship because they're, they're going to, well, you know, we forgot to take bread. <laughs> you get another argument there and Jesus says, where's your faith? Well, you know, at the end of 4,000, they had no bread. And, well, how many How many did you take up with the five loaves and two fish? Well, 12. How many did you take up, I you know, forget what the 4,000. Can you imagine the astonishment 
And I don't know if each disciple had a basket, but there's 12 baskets. There's that number 12. And they're picking up what's left over. Can you imagine they're looking at each other? Wait a minute, everybody's got a basket here. And they're all full now. We started off with five and two. That makes seven. And he end up with 12. That would drive a math teacher insane. Okay, you want to be Mr. Smarty Pants? You want to mix poison together and say, look, I turned the water into, into wine, but you can't drink it? All right, you sit down in your classroom, put five loaves and two fish, and call 4,000, 5,000 students in your, in your school. Have them all come and take a bite and see how long it will last. It ain't going to work. Because God is the God of impossibilities. God is the God of miracles, and it's not a sorcerer. And again, you can take this 5,000 men and women, not included, and the children not included. You can bring all these people into a courtroom, and it would have to stand ashore that this happened. There was no gimmicks. There was no illusions. There was no hocus pocus. And the 12 disciples and the disciples of John would have to stand to it, and the court would have to listen to them if it was any reckonable court. Well, somewhere along the line, I've, I've been checking. I don't really get into that kind of stuff. Some scholar has excused this some way, somehow. You know, somebody gave him everybody a couple bottle, a couple tablets of tomes or something. And made their torment, you know, yeah, I'll just trust God. And God will take care of me because I've seen not five loaves and two fishes. I've seen my budget taken care of by God. I've seen my life full of abundance by God. So I'll just trust God, Jesus Christ. <laughs>